שיש לנו מגדל עוז שאנחנו יכולים לברוח בו you know that we have a tower of strengths ונשגב יש לנו שיר על זה and we have a song about it Yes. 
and you were crying with those who were crying that had pains. And we ask that you will um, comfort, Lord. Uh, fill them with your love and your grace. Uh, that the happiness of the remembrance of the daughter will be stronger than what is lost. And your love will fill the void of what they don't have. Lord, I bless this family in your name. And I ask, Lord, that you will help every one of us to remember that life is very short and that we will know to look at you in every situation, Lord, and have comfort in you. And Abba Father, that we will continue in your love. We, we bless uh, Sveta, Gregory, the father and the mother, and uh, Jenny and the sister. Please comfort them. In the name of Yeshua, Mashiach, Amen. Also, Pedro would like to say some words. Anna, whoever knew her, we, she was raised in this family. She was always part of us, part of the team also. We have done a lot of things together. She was growing here and she knew the Lord here. And four days before she died, I spoke with her. Everything was okay. And four days later, that's it. She it's finished. Today we came to the family and I spoke with Sweta, the mother. And she, she spoke of a dream she had that she prepare a, a garden in a, a, in a orange color and suddenly the, 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 there came a, like a cabin when you put the, a, the, the dead people there and it was open and, and, and uh, there was nothing inside and then she was smiling and I don't understand how things happen. I don't know the plans of the Lord, but it gives us hope that nothing that happened in our life without the, the sovereignty of God, because he knows everything. The mother really suffers. Anna was 26 when she died, and no reason shown, but she's not in the place of the dead. Thank you. Uh, we see you, we speak to the family, and we hug you, if you look. Thank you, congregation, you can sit down. Thank you for the worship team. If we are still in the spirit of prayer, I would like to invite Kostya and Yulia. We want to uh, pray for them and bless them. And maybe you know them. There are more than one here in this congregation. And we see you always. I'll tell you in short uh, that they live in Crimea under Russian uh, rule. But they do not want to go back to that place. They have a great dilemma where to go, go where to, to live. Kostya has a citizenship in Israel. They, uh, Yule does have a city, Israeli citizenship, so they have to leave. And they uh, ask that uh, we'll pray for them, that God will uh, protect, uh, guide them.
Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that we can trust you in any situation. Many times we have, we have uh, un, uh, unpleasant uh, surprises, but we ask for your blessing, Lord. Bless them, uh, go with them, lead them, protect them in all their ways. And you have a plan for each and every one, for every family. And we bless them in the name of Yeshua, that they will walk in your plans, that they will be aligned to your plans and will seek your face. Thank you, Lord. And uh, help us to be a part in that, that we'll bear them in our prayers, that we'll uh, uh, keep in touch because we are brothers and sisters in you. All the glory and all the honor is yours. So thank you. And we ask that you give them clarity where to go, where to stay, where to live, in what to work. You're above all. And you have all the answers. Thank you, Lord. We bless them in, the, in your precious name. Amen. Uh, dear congregation, we thank you. We thank you all. It was a great time to be here. Every meeting was a celebration for us. We were engulfed with the love of God and the, and the glory of God. And we want to bless all this uh, gathering, all this uh, congregation, that no, uh, nothing bad will happen to you, that you will uh, be healthy and safe. Amen. Recently we had a meeting, a prayer meeting of men, and some people shared a testimony, and Dima spoke, said, how they uh, how they um, s uh, um, spread the gospel through art. <coughs> so I'm working uh, uh, in an in a organization called uh, Jews for Jesus, and um, I'm an animator, and we work in a project, uh, Yeshua, full stop. We speak about him, his uh, place in the Israeli society. We are very open to who we are, what we are doing. And in 7th of October, we are in the dilemma, what to speak about, how to speak. Because one of the things we didn't want to do is to, is to exploit the pain of people for to, to bring uh, an idea. But we thought we were shocked like everybody else with what happened here. And one of the things we felt uh, was right to do was to deal with the Psalms. And so we started the project with short, short songs um, based on the Psalms. We had a musician to work on it and we animated it because I myself didn't know how to do it. But Psalms ha help us to bring hope and consolation. 
אבל הרגשנו שהמילים שלנו הן לא מספיקות. אבל טקסט... The text was uh, the, the biblical text, 3,000 years of, of wars and exile, and still speaks of a hope, is a, is a good uh, thing to rely on. So we started with doing things, and we, we, uh, we invited uh, other animators that are non-believers, well-known people, to take part in this project. So I'll show you some, some of the things I did. So this is one of the short uh, videos I worked on, and the meaning is to show from the one hand the pastoral place, the, kib the southern kibbutz, and this uh, image just shatters to small pieces, and it is built again, and the suddenness, suddenness of life, and there's the incense of the bl the incense blue blue incense in the background, which is a constant, a co a constant in the movie, in the video, even during the night, the darkness, even then, when there is very little hope, it is still there. And then, when we invited other uh, artists. Many animators joined, and we were very surprised. We said we are uh, Jews who believe in Jesus, but this project speaks about hope and consolation and creating a positive thing in time where uh, the uh, media is full of uh, hate and, and pain and uh, blame. And more and more people agreed to take part in the project and uh, shared it with other people. And one uh, week ago, we uh, did a, a conference they were highly, uh, uh, highly public in, in, in the media. It was a festival, it was, a, it was an exhibition, and I wanted to show you so, some things. This is a religious animator, and, and I invited him, and I was surprised he, he took part. His, uh, the artist's name is Ofer Winter, and he did several videos, and in each of them the, this lamb appeared, and he explained that, that uh, after the, the, the war he, he couldn't sleep, 
So he just uh, stayed in bed and counted the sheep. And he also explained that I'm a small sheep. In God's world, I'm, uh, I don't have any power. I'm just like a child in the hands of God. And my only hope is in Him. When all the uh, walls of security fall down, so it is like a small sheep looking at the, at the shepherd. And I'll show you just another one, the last one, of Dafi Ben Ami. Okay. So, so this animation is from a, a lady called Daffy Ben Ami. And one, uh, one uh, month ago, she uh, presented her job in an Oscar. It was a, it was very short uh, movie, but the first time it came to this uh, position. She's really renowned and, and known, and it was very surprising, uh, her, the openness and, 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 and joy where she came, took this project. And a week ago, I asked the artists to share. I shared my uh, experiences, and it was very, very interesting to hear how, how Israeli artists some are non-believers. I don't see myself as a religious person or, or who believes any, in any sense. But when everything falls down, you're looking for what to cling on. I found myself looking at the, at the biblical text and I uh, found there a depth that I didn't know existed there. And she said, Daffy, on the beginning of the war, when the war started, she didn't know how to continue, how to create in a, in a world with so much pain and suffering. And when we turned to her with the project, project meant to give hope and consolation, she said, this is the invitation I needed uh, in order that it allowed me to create. <laughs> and <laughs> when she presented in the, in the, in the exhibition, <laughs> I was sure she was, a, she was a, a believer, speaking about her con the connection she had with God, etc. So in all the movies, uh, all the videos, uh, speak about hope and are relying on God. It's important that, uh, that we uh, conduct this uh, discussion to hear from other people what they have and to look the, the place where we can agree to continue this uh, conversation. It was very blessed. And next time, we want to do uh, a project of the uh, prodigal, prodigal son. For me, it was a testimony about uh, what God is doing in our, in our nation. And the way God turns even the hard situation to touch people. Thank you, Dima. Thank you. With all the situations in the world, the, the war in Ukraine and in Israel, 
now threats from Iran. So thanks God that there are people who want to create. Let us pray for the uh, offering. Let us bow the. W let us bow to, to God in our in our offering. God, we thank you that you provide provide for us that you open our hearts to to give a donation and or offering. We thank you for the uh, your, the money that you give us in the name of Yeshua. Amen. So boys and girls, young and younger, please come forward. We want to, we want to bless you. Let us bless the, the kids. God, Father God, we thank you, Father, how good you are that you give us this uh, great gift. Thank you for every boy and every girl. We ask that you'll bless them and strengthen them. Just uh, pour your love upon them that they will know you from young age, that they will know they work with you, obey you. In the name of Yeshua, bless them this evening and the team that uh, is with them. Give them the wisdom to give our children your uh, word. They will take it as a basis for their life. We thank you, Father, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. So good evening everyone. Before we start with the word of God, anyone here for the first time? Anyone here for the first time? Le raise your hand. Where are you from? Norway. Welcome. And now anyone else? First time here? Where are you from? Germania. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Anyone from this side and this this side? Where are you from? Australia. Welcome. Welcome, Matthew. Anyone else? Where are you from? Carmiel. Welcome. Welcome. Thank God. Thanks, God. So I ask anyone to put the, your telephones in a quiet... Uh, so if anyone... <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so put it in a quiet mode. Silent mode. Great. And if it rings, maybe. <laughs> okay. So let us pray for the word. Father God, thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness that we can uh, get stronger in you to learn, to get st stronger and bring it to this uh, fallen world. I thank you, Father, for everything that you have done and for everything that you will do and ask your blessing in this evening that you speak to any one of us. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. This week, all our nation is uh, reading a Bible portion called Tazria. <laughs> so this Bible portion is called, you should put a seed in the ground, Leviticus 12. So just open your Bibles, Leviticus. The Leviticus 12, it's the shortest, le shortest, okay, so just uh, open, uh, we'll just read the whole ch chapter, it's eight, uh, eight, ve eight ve verses, Leviticus, Leviticus, Leviticus 12, the shortest one in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 12, verse. The Lord said to Moses, say, say to the Israelites, a woman who becomes pregnant and gives back to a son will be ceremonially unclean for seven days, just as she is unclean during her monthly period. On the eighth day, the boy is to be circumcised. Then the woman must... Uh, wait 33 days to be purified from her bleeding. She must not touch anything sacred or go to the sanctuary until days of her purification are over. And if she gives birth to a daughter, for two weeks the womb will be unclean, as during her period. Then she must wait 66 days to be purified from her bleeding. When the days of her purifications for a son or daughter are over, she is to bring the priest at the entrance of the tent, meeting a year old lamb for a uh, burnt offering, a young pigeon or a dove for a sin offering. He shall offer them before the Lord to make atonement for her, and then she will be ceremonially clean from her flow of blood. These are the regulations for a woman who gives birth to a boy or a girl. But if she cannot afford a lamb, she's, she is to bring two doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for her and she will be clean. Interesting uh, section. I saw some. What's going on here? And this is what's interesting. Actually, there are, there are parts in the scriptures it, that are hard to deal with. And when I challenged myself to, 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 to preach from this, from this section, and I, asked, I, t I told myself, what can I take from this section today? What I, as a man, can learn from this chapter today for my life. And one of the preachers said to preach from all kinds of... To uh, juggle. It's like to juggle 
different objects and you start to do it. And the harder the and the harder the uh, section, you take some other objects. But when he said, when I came to to this chapter, he said, it's like to to, to take a, a electrical saw and to do it in the first verses, and then you not only you do it, you also activate <laughs> the, the electric saw and you continue to do it. But the word of God tells us. In the second Timothy, second Timothy, second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen, all Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Amen. Do you believe in that? Great. So if you believe in that. We can continue with this text of Leviticus. The text, the whole Bible portion, it deals with cleansing of a leper. But it starts of a clean cleansing of a woman who gave birth. And all these rules, they speak about that a woman is become, becomes unclean and you have to bring an offering and there is blood and you know that the blood uh, is represents life. Blood, if you take blood from this body, the, this body cannot live. You cannot live without blood. And when a woman gives birth, and especially if that time, a woman who gives birth loses loses blood blood so why is she unclean we know that the children is a blessing god commanded multiply so how does it how does it uh, come to be a woman that gives birth becomes unclean why is that so what happened and the blood that signifies, represents life, hints to something. The fact that a woman, after gives birth, cannot touch anything that is sacred and cannot go to the temple. What does it say to us today? She's like uh, being punished. You say, ah, you don't touch that. You're not allowed. You're not good enough to touch that. And you no, do not go there. But it's not exactly like that. Just think. A woman, after she gave birth, she cannot do normal thi things she did day by day. What does it mean? It means God gives her time of rest. She cannot she cannot do work at home, not to cook food, clean, go somewhere to, to bring, uh, to buy from the market. But she can. She, she, but she can be with the baby. God gives time, a special time for a woman to get stronger, to be with the baby, to build this connection. And she didn't sin, we'll see it. The, cl the cleansing is not from a sin. It's more a ritual uh, cleansing. So in his grace, he took care of the woman as men. Always need the help of a wo woman. It's not only me, right? I remember where one of our our children almost got, got uh, uh, birth when bef before, we, before we went to the... <laughs> so she cooked and, uh, uh, and she already had a contraction and she's cooking because she knew 
and I pray God. <laughs> you let her finish the cooking after otherwise what shall I eat <laughs> after I take her to the hospital? So in this section we see God separates the woman and gives her time of rest. With the son it's uh, a week and then circumcision and then 33 days. And if it's a daughter, twice as much. Why? Why is it so? All, the, all those scholars are asking this question. Why? You take it in a negative way. If, if the woman is unclean, and if she, she gave birth, <laughs> she gave birth to a woman, it's twice as much. It's more time. But after I look at the, at the, at the, at the, at the sacrifice, it's not a different uh, sacrifice. So, uh, so a daughter is less important or more unclean, so we need to bring a, a different uh, sacrifice. So there are all kinds of assumptions or <laughs> really, really strange uh, explanations, what people think. But what we can understand, there is a chapter of getting stronger, a time in during birth, she lost blood, she lost some of her strength, and God gives her time to get stronger. But what we can learn in this situation, when a, a child is born, it reminds a person that his life, one day, will end because children is a continuation. What was the primordial or the original sin? God created the man to live forever. Everything was great, but they sinned. And, they, and, this, and there came the punishment, which is death. And when a child was bor is born, remind yourself the, this uh, original sin. <laughs> yes, you still have some time. I think today doesn't remind us. When you look at your children, did you think about your death? I don't think so. But maybe we should. So that we understand that our life are really, really short. It's a time that God gave you. And if you do you think there is a purpose for your life? <laughs> All those who believe that you have <laughs> purpose for your life, we have to ask ourselves, do I know what this purpose is? Or do I live my life just like that and, uh, and burn it the days and in the end don't, don't, don't even get close to the uh, goal that God put to me. When we look at the children, let us think, what for do we live? What do we live for? The children are both our present and our future. How much we can invest in their life and how much we can in invest in your plan for, for me. That we will want this that we'll want to remember the grace of God that in spite of this old original sin, God did not wipe us out, but gave us a continuation. He uh, gave us children. He gives them us to protect, to, 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 uh, to nurture, for a, for a restricted time. <coughs> and what is my place for them? And I think it's amazing that we can bless our children to pray for them. Uh, 
Now, this uh, original sin and the grace of God we learn from this uh, section, chapter. God reminds us this short time that we have. And in addition, there's yet another uh, effect of this uh, original uh, sin. In Genesis 3.16 it says, to the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing, in pain you shall bring, in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. So God is speaking about pain. When children come to this world, it accompanies pain. And it was not in the original plan. It's a result of, the, of this uh, sin, original sin. And I think this, this result anyone experienced who lives his life without, without suffering? No? He didn't come today. <laughs> it's a pity. <laughs> if, he d if he would, I have so many questions. How could you do it? How could you live your life without suffering? In what bubble, in, in what bubble do you live? But it's part of life. And this is a result, consequence of the uh, original sin. And, and suffering is a tool that builds us. They say that uh, a person that is 50 years old here and, and uh, gets up with no pain, asks himself, am I dead or am I alive? So a suffering is, is reminds us what has been and what will be. In First, uh, first Peter 5.10, we read, First Peter 5.10, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. What a great promise. Thanks God that grace, that suffering is, uh, is temporary. For me, it's a relief that everything is hard for you. This kind of suffering or that, it's always temporal, temporary. And God prepares for us a different time that we can live in a different dimension. He, br he prepares for us His kingdom where no suffering will exist there. And when I go back to the birth in Leviticus, a boy is being born as a mother stays with him. And yet another thing I thought that in some place, in some stage, how many of us, some of us become spiritual, spiritual parents. And this principle, when a child is born, it's an important principle that we can apply in our lives. When we, uh, when we um, go with something, someone in faith, and the person accepts Yeshua, receive Yeshua to his life, we need not, we need not leave, leave him. He's like a baby. He needs uh, our, um, uh, our guarding, our leading. And I remember when I came, came to faith, there was a lady who came to us every day praying and teaching us. I, we had so many questions, doubts, while you are just beginning. And this principle is very applicable that someone of you will lead someone to faith. So let us look 
about cleansing. We said it's not because of sin. It was never said that to give birth to children is a sin. So what from do we need to cleanse her? And the, the, the respond, response is from the sin that we acquire that we acquire through birth. When we come to this world, we, we already have a, a sinning, sinful nature. Let us look in the Psalms 51, 5. Psalms 51, 5. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. So I was already born in sin. And these uh, young uh, boys need this uh, cleansing. And the nice thing we can see here God knew about the situation and he took care of every, every detail. When he speaks about the offering, he took care of every detail. What can a person do to cleanse himself from the sin that he didn't commit? Because the sin that we acquire the, is just in us. When, when you say to someone, do not steal. Do not kill anyone. Okay. Do not... Yes. Do not covet. What will you do with a sin that is already in you? Can you change something? And it's the grace of, of the Lord that He takes care of it. In First John, in First John 4:10, in this, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation, propitiation for our sins. In Romans 3, Romans 3:23 3, to 25, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a prop propitiation by His blood, blood to be received by faith. This is to show God His righteousness because in His divine uh, uh, sons that He has passed of the former sins. I thank God for that. Because I couldn't take care of this problem. Not in, not in the sin that is uh, in you. So God took care. So as to pay and to... Um, and to cleanse this sin. Do you understand the weight of this thing? What does it mean that you are a sinful person can come to a holy God and He will accept you by grace because He paid the price for you? There's a story about a Jew, a poor Jew. He had many girls and one of them came to the age of uh, marriage and he had no money to show his, his show his his wife said what are you complaining send a letter to god so he sends a letter to god god holy god mighty god sovereign god i turn to you my daughter is has is a time of wedding and i don't have money for that i ask 
of you 50,000 shekels to have a prop, proper wedding. He puts the letter in an envelope and he writes on the envelope for God and he puts it in the uh, mailbox. The, the, the mailman brings the letters to the post and he sees and he sees a letter <laughs> saying to God where to put it. So he decides to open the letter. He opens the letter, the envelope, he reads it, he turns an appeal to God and he says, wow. He, sa he closes the letter, the envelope, and he puts another <laughs> and he adds and he adds a small letter to God in the house of Rothschild. As Rothschild comes to take the, the mail, he opens the letter and he reads to God in Rothschild's house. And he is like uh, he's uh, he feels great and he reads that some some Jew cannot cannot uh, prepare the wedding ask for 50,000 shekels and he tells one of his clerks okay take 40,000 shekels and bring and bring that Jew and this and he explains the the, the clerk he said he asked for 50 that he'll uh, compromise a little bit about the book the food and the dress so not 50 40,000 shekels and uh, and the clerk brings the money to the to the Jew and they prepare the celebration and then there is a second daughter and he needs to, to wed her and no money so he knows what to do and he writes a letter and he sends the letter puts and the mailman writes again, again same story opens and reads God, sovereign God, I turn to you again. The second daughter <coughs> comes to age and I have no money. I ask 50,000 shekels. And yet another thing. Don't bring it through Gotchid. He took, <laughs> he took 20% 20, 20 commission. <laughs> so understand <laughs> this, this principle. <laughs> we as humans look for something that we will be will have will feel good this is an imaginary story of course what is for Rothschild 10,000 shekels it's for him it's nothing but, but humans always look for something but God didn't look didn't look for that to cover our to save us from our sins. He gave his only son because so much God loved the, wor the world, his only begotten son, so that no one will be lost and everyone who believes in him will inherit eternal life. And if someone still didn't get this gift, God gives, wants to give you. He wants to forgive your sins and he does ask for 20% or 50%, no payment. The payment is already paid. And he asks for faith. The only thing that God wants is faith. And anyone who received it, what is it supposed to, to, to do in our lives? A gratitude, a great gratitude. God, thank you how good you are. How wonderful you are back to Leviticus he's asking for uh, an offering for cleaning and he says in verse 8 anyone doesn't find a lamb let him bring a dove or a pigeon namely God opens it to everyone to rich people and to poor people he wants to give this cleansing to clean your sins and my sins you don't have to pay 
in Isaiah, Isaiah 55, 1. Isaiah 55, 1. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine, wine and milk without money and without price. That's how God invites. If anyone doesn't have money, it's not a problem. God does not need money. He wants our heart my heart and your heart he wants us and when we understand that then it changes the meaning of life why did i ask about the meaning if anyone has a, a goal in his life a prince uh, because it's important for what we live if you understand that he did something for you for a specific goal it will uh, drive you to do something. In Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of age. To the end of the age. There is, there is a reason for our life. And if we understand the greatness of the thing that God did to us, for us, will want to do something with us. Do you remember in Kings 2, 77, 17, 7, there is a story of, of a war, a battle, a city, a city uh, um, uh, surrounded by the enemy, and the lepers said, if we go to the city, we'll, we'll die. If we'll go to our enemies, maybe we'll leave. And when they went them, they found an empty, the camp was uh, deserted. They ate, they, were, they took whatever they wanted, money and gold. Then they went to another tent and then they said, just a second, what are we doing? We need to tell, tell the king, we need to bring the joy to others. We cannot keep everything for ourselves so that others will receive uh, the, this blessing. If we understand what we got, we cannot, we cannot put it in the, in the soil, in the earth. We want to share with it. We want to bring it to, to people who don't have it, especially in these times, these hard times. There's no hope. There's no peace, no security, no joy pain, suffering, fear, there are so many bad things, depression, so that the, the, the word, the message that you can bring is a great message that Yeshua gave his life for you. You, don't not, you do not need to be fearful because he, he prepares something amazing for you in his kingdom if you, if you accept him. I invite you to pray with me together, that God will give us courage that we will be able to uh, share the gospel everywhere we are when we pass in the street, that we will bring uh, hope to people with courage and with the might of the Spirit. Abba Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you that you are good and amazing. Thank you that you are loving. Thank you that you gave us the forgiveness of sin. 
free. I want to thank you that uh, your word teaches us even from uh, uh, this uh, of what we read uh, that we can uh, see what is your nature that you don't want anyone to be dead or in his sins you want to save thank you that you always wanted and you are, you want uh, I want I want to thank you that for everyone who accepted you as the sacrifice of our uh, sins you are the forgive uh, sacrifice of the forgiveness of the sins and I ask that you will uh, make us disciples that will say the gospel that we teach others about your beautiful deeds and uh, that we will uh, baptize people in the water in, in the spirit and that people will give uh, their life to you that they will walk after that everyone who is accepting you that he will understand what a great treasure we have and nobody will want to hide it in under the ground but to share in the world to give it to others that don't know that they don't have hope thank you for the eternal hope that you gave us thank you lord that you gave us a uh, strength and might thank you Yeshua for the gospel you give us you put it in our hands and we are your witnesses stand here before you and praise your name and give you all glory Amen in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach
you, Lord, for all your grace. Thank you that you chose to die to give us life. Thank you that you are the one who purifies us, clean us from what is not clean from the uh, ancient sin and the, all the sins. We want to thank you and we bow down before you. God bless you and keep you. May God uh, shine on you and, and uh, have grace for you that he will have his face on you and that he will give you peace in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. Shabbat Shalom everyone. Bless one. Bless you.